here's some things the preppers should be more focused on. Let's go for it. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on the videos and checking the channel out. You join me today, a little bit out of breath. I'm doing a bit of a walk. It's only a few kilometers, but it's uphills, downhills, rough terrain, road walking. Got a backpack on. It's probably about 18 kilo, 40 pound in weight, and a bit of training. So while I'm pushing on the walk, we we'll have a bit of a chat about what I think preppers should be more focused on in these troubling times. Right, so I'm gonna be blowing for a bit because it's uh, an uphill start. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this in a bit. So I'll fetch you back when I get to the top of this hill. Oh, a bit of a tough climb that is to start off. Right, so what's this video about? Well, we live in troubling times to me. You know, there's all sorts going on in the world. Whether it's uh, Eastern Europe, the Middle East, you know, potential financial disaster looming. You know, there's a lot going on in the world, isn't there? Yeah, and with that, there's been a lot of interest in prepping, which is good. It would make sense to a lot of us, doesn't it, to be prepared. No, oh, never car coming now. So this video is just my take, what I feel like preppers, where we're a new world, should be more focused on. Put their attentions to the best use. Now the first one being ignoring the hype. And what do I mean by that? Well, we have all these things going on in the world. Um, you see it over and over again. A lot of these prepping channels out there you know, I won't mention any names, but there's big ones in America or farmers come in. But yeah, it's a busy road today. Oh yeah, you right. Right, what was I saying? Yeah, prepping channels. Loads of them about, which is good. It's good to get the message out, isn't it? Um, but there's a few there, really well-known ones, especially, like I say, in America, Canada. And there's one or two in the UK, yeah. That they're overhyped, I think. They just they just push fear mongering. Now they say they don't, but you look at the headlines of the videos, thumbnails, it's alert, alert, do this now. UK preppers, you're uprising, do this now. It's all doom and gloom, isn't it? There's no good to anyone. In my opinion. Oh, they're flat now, am I? I jog for a bit. That's enough of that. And a lot of the information they're giving out, it's just the same old message over and over again. You know, the latest one now is, oh, the electric's gonna go off this winter. Are you prepared for the electric to go off? You know, the government's gonna do this, government's gonna do that. Yes, we have electric off, we have electric off all the time, and especially in the countryside, especially for storms. But you just deal with it, didn't you? You know, if you're prepared, you can deal with it. Make sure you've got these things, because there's going to be a blackout. Yeah, we've seen it over and over again for years, and not much really happens. But it sells, doesn't it? Now, I can understand why they do it, because views makes money, doesn't it? So it ups the views, gets the subscriber count up, you know, and good luck to them, if that's what they're going to do. And I say, if it's their only job, if they haven't got a real job, then yeah, that's what they need to do to get money in, don't they? But I always think, where's the value for money? If it's good, solid information, then you don't mind paying, you don't mind chipping in. But if the information's speculative, like most of the time it is, you know, it's from, oh, I've had an email from so-and-so, he's told me that he's heard this and all that, you know, is there any truth in it? I know a few of them have been caught out before pushing these videos, um, especially in the UK, and not verified, and it's turned out to be totally bullshit. You know, but it's too late then, they hooked you in, they got your money, and that's it, isn't it? So without going on too much about it, all I'm saying is, yeah, get informed, make sure you know what's going on in the world, but just don't get hooked in to the hype. I'm on a bit of rough terrain now. Slow me down a little bit. Right, so that was my first thing, really is, um, I think I've got five altogether, is don't believe the hype. Yes, be informed, but don't get suckered into the, the same old 
stuff over and over again. You know what I'm on about. So my second point of what preppers should really focus their attention on, I believe, is getting skilled up. So what do I mean by getting skilled up? Well, learn some skills, skills that might come in handy, you know, if the time ever comes. Now, skills could be car maintenance, it could be home maintenance, it could be survival skills, you know, bushcraft. All them skills are available, different courses all over the UK, and knowledge is key, isn't it? You see a lot of prepper channels out there where they're just showing what they've had from the shops. You know, they've gone off shopping for the day to the supermarket and look everybody, look what I've bought today. This is my prepper haul. They've got X amount of tins of beans and, and whatnot and they go through it. It's just all well and good, isn't it? Yeah. But what happens when your tins of beans run out? If there was such a disaster, what happens when your cupboards are bare? Have you got the skills, the knowledge to carry on? You know, to, to keep surviving, feeding yourself, keeping yourself warm, dry, and your family, isn't it? So skills, I think, are really important. And when it comes to preppers, and prepping out there, the channels, so, you know, claiming they're survival experts and whatnot, no one is an expert in prepping. Unless they've lived through an SHCF situation, or they've been in a situation where they need them sort of skills. They've learned them, practiced them, and they've got experience. Now just because you've been prepping for 10, 12 years, and you've got a cupboard full of food, and you've got all, these, all this kit, it doesn't make you an expert. And yes, you might go camping one night, you might spend a couple of nights overnight in the woods, you know, in your army gear, under a bit of a shelter and cook yourself a meal and whatever. That does not make you a survival expert. So if you are going on courses, make sure you go on the courses where the instructors and the course organizers, they know what they're talking about. You know, they've got the experience, they've got the qualifications, you know, they've got years and years of doing this sort of stuff um, in real time or in, in uh, real life situations, I should say. I'm not gonna push the courses we do at the bug out um, with first in events, but I will say they do some fantastic courses and I'd say more realistic courses. Yes, you've got your bushcraft and survival courses. They're brilliant, you know, if you're into that sort of stuff, um, prepping, bugging out. But they do really good practical courses as well. Your navigation courses, your first aid, you know, outdoor first aid. Really important in skill to learn. So if you had someone there, your phone's ringing now. Yeah, bloody phone interrupt. Yeah, and what was I saying? First aid skills, yeah. Hang on, let's get through this gate. Yeah, so if you were, so when it comes to prepping, first aid, really good, important skill to learn, isn't it? You know, if you're bugging out and you're out in the wilds, or if you're bugging in and you're home, at some point, someone in your party or yourself could be injured, and it could be serious, could be life-threatening. So it's always good to know first aid skills, and not just your basic first aid, but a really good course to get on is an outdoor first aid, where you deal in proper trauma, you know, and injuries that you're more likely gonna face if you're out in the hills or even at home. I'll put a link below um, available courses and dates and whatnot. Myself, I've been on one of them courses uh, last year. Really good course, credited, so you get a qualification as well. A bit downhill now. Another really good practical course or skill to learn is navigation. You know, if you are thinking about going out in the hills, countryside, learn to navigate. Don't rely on your, your gadgets and gizmos because uh, the time you want to rely on them, they don't work or the batteries run out or whatever it is. So learn to use a map and compass, especially if you're out in the hills and the weather turns. You know, cold, wet, the last thing you want to be doing is lost. And then, uh, yeah, it becomes a life-threatening situation again then, isn't it? You know bit rough in the foot here. Right, we're another uphill section now, really steep. So yeah, skills. If you do get yourself on courses, get yourself skilled up, don't forget to do refreshers, because these skills, navigation, first aid, you know, no matter what course it is, they are perishable skills, so you do forget if you don't use them. So make sure you go and refresh your courses as well. So that's it. Second point, you see me, the sun's real bright, isn't it? Is get yourself skilled up. Third point, and it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this today, is fitness. Get yourself physically fit. Now I've seen a lot of prepper channels out there, and uh, I know I keep going on about it, but it does make me laugh. They're showing all the kit they got. They got the big bug out bag, inch bag. They're going through it, and yeah, it's all interesting what kit they got and all that. Most of the kit's brand new, never used. 
and the bag probably weighs about 25 kilos. I don't know if you can see me. But can I actually physically pick it up? Well, not just pick it up. Can I carry it over distance, up hills, down hills? Probably not. There's a few guys out there who do do it. And hats off to them. Put the money where their mouth is. But a lot of people, they don't. So they're telling people, you should do this, you should do that. But unless they do it themselves, why should we listen to them? Today I'm doing this. 40 pound on the back, going uphill, downhill, in a bit of a circuit, and that's what well, I keep myself fit. Obviously, I am training for a few walks coming next year, and the reason for that, you know, a family man, aren't I? I'm a father, husband, so when the time comes, I need to be relied on. Now, if there was some sort of SHTF situation, and we had to bug out, or we had to walk back from somewhere, it's no good the wife and kids trying to rely on me and I'm not physically fit to do anything. I can't carry the load, I can't walk the distance. I try my best to work out a bit at home in the little gym we got, we built um, this year. Yeah, well, I'm not talking you know, lifting mass amounts of weights. It's more running, you know, because I broke my ankle nine years ago. So it was a, this year is the first time I've been be able to run a few push-up sit-ups, trying to strengthen my calf muscles up again, which I lost uh, after breaking my ankle. So yeah, not talking about being world's strongest man, but just being capable of doing the tasks you need to do in order to survive any situation. And survival is not all about physical fitness, it's mental fitness as well. You know, are you mentally capable to function when disaster strikes? You know, are you gonna panic? Are you gonna freeze? Or are you gonna keep a calm head and think, right, this is a situation we're in, this is what we need to do, and now we overcome it. So being mentally prepared as well. And the only way you can be mentally prepared is to go out there and do training, isn't it? Use the skills you've learned on courses and go out there and train. Go out there, do a walk, carrying weight, build up slowly, camp overnight if you had to. Use the gear you've got. And it ties in with the first two elements of this video, isn't it? Don't just sit there for hours watching YouTube videos, someone talking about prepping, not actually doing it. Get yourself skilled up, get on courses, and then go out, get yourself fit, and get yourself trained. So you're mentally prepared, you're physically fit. So if something does happen, you're more than capable to tackle that, whatever it is, head on. Right, we're on a bit of a downhill slope down the road. I always find walking on the road is a bit harder than walking on the rough terrain somehow. We've got more cars coming. Right, we're on our way back now, so I better hurry up with this video. So we've had ignoring the hype, get skilled up, and keep yourself physically fit. So I always think making good investments is another thing preppers should really focus their attention on. And I'm not just talking monetary investments. Yes, you can go out there and you know, invest a little bit in gold, silver, crypto if you really want to. I don't really know much about that. To me, it's just not putting all your eggs in one basket and spreading you know, some of the extra cash if you've got any. I know not everybody has. But it's not just about investing money, it's investing your time as well. So what do I mean by that? Well, time is short, isn't it? Time is one thing you can't buy and you can never get back. So don't waste it just watching endless, endless videos, unless they're mine, of course. Get out there and be more proactive. You can sit there for hours, can you? I, you know, sometimes I've done it. And just watching these videos, especially the live streams, go on and on for ages and ages. And after an hour or so, an hour and a half, you're no better off you. You're not better off for any information. It's, it's the same stuff just regurgitating over and over again. So be more proactive with your time. Invest in your time more wisely. You know, get out there. As I said before, get skilled up. If, if things need doing to the house, the car, get them done. If your kit needs maintaining, get it done, keep on top of it. If you need to get fit, you need to do some training, use your kit, get on and do it. Now, you know it's hard, especially you have to work for a living. You know, you've got proper jobs, not YouTubers. You're always finding time to do it. But that's where you just got to be smart. You know, invest your time wisely. And not just the time, but as I said before, your money as well. You'll see a lot of YouTube videos or channels. They're just pushing the sales of certain items, you know, more likely because they've got a uh, vested interest in it. You know, they're, they're taking a cut from sales. They're pushing equipment. Now a lot of that time the equipment is given to them for free. So of course they're gonna push it and they, they're obliged to do it. No matter how much they go on about it, do you really need it? So don't waste money. Like I said, if you've got a proper job and you've got to work for your money, it's hard to come by, isn't it? No joke. 
So spend it wisely, invest in it wisely. Now, if you've got spare cash in the bank, with inflation, you're losing value all the time, aren't you? So you're better off, in my opinion, like I'm not a financial expert, but in my opinion, you're better off to transfer that money into more tangible items. Whether it's kit, equipment, stuff you actually need, keep you warm, dry, or even bartering items if you're that way inclined, if you think, you know, you could have a breakdown in society and all that. Very unlikely, but not impossibility. So yeah, if you've got spare cash, don't just let it sit around, do nothing or lose value. Transfer that cash into more tangible items. Or even like I said before, skills. Turn that cash into skills. Get yourself trained up downhill now for a bit and then it's uphill to, to the finish line. So there we are, um, what's that, number four? We're only a few hundred yards from home. Um, so better hurry up. So we've had, ignoring the hype, get skilled up, get fit, and invest your time wisely, or invest wisely, your time and money. So the last one of my five things that um, preppers should really focus on, I believe in these troubling times, is community. Now the good thing about this year, there's been a lot more interest in prepper communities, prepper, prepper meets. Which is fantastic because the more people can get together and network, the better. Now there's been a few upsets about previous prepper meets, so I'm not gonna go into too much. Everybody knows what's happened. But if you have got some sort of prepper meet, prepper group, you'll find them on Facebook and whatever, near you, I suggest you go out there and you network. You talk to other people. They might not be preppers, but they might be like-minded people who like to go out and who know what's going on in the world. Get out there and network, form communities, friendships. You never know when you're gonna need a hand. And communities don't have to be just preppers, you know, like-minded people. They could also be your neighbours, your family. You know, so when time comes, I'm a great believer in when bad times come, we tend to stick together and help each other out. In certain parts of the country, not everywhere, like places in the inner, inner cities these days, I don't think that would happen, not like it did during the Second World War. I think them days are long gone, I'm afraid. But I'm, I'm hopeful that if something did happen, especially in the rural com communities, We'd stick together. Who's on the phone now, man? Right, we're always like, yeah, community. Now I have the bug out weekender, just gone. That was fantastic. You know, we get a group of people together and um, we have a bit of a laugh, a few talks, you know, for a walk this time. But most importantly, it's about networking, you know, forming them communities, exchanging details, you know, exchanging ideas. Human beings have evolved in groups, haven't they? You know, we haven't evolved by a one-man army, Rambo style, we've, we've evolved or survived and, th and thrived in groups. Oh, last push now. Got someone at the shop waiting, even though it's closed today. So uh, can't miss a sale, gotta push on and see what he wants. Oh, here comes the kids on the bus. Yeah, if you're not a part of any groups, get on the social media. Find a local prepper group. There's loads about. I've got a community page where you can go in there and I can, I can put you in contact with others in the area. And there's information on other prepper meets. So get on there and get part of a community. Together, we won't just survive, but we'll thrive. A bit cheesy, isn't it? Community, there we are. That's it. That's enough said on that. If I forgot anything, it's too late because we've made it back. So there we are. Oh, neighbor. Was a chat. Right, where was I? Well, community, isn't it? Talking to their neighbours, keeping friends, that's what it's all about. Yeah, um, it's five things that I think the preppers should be focusing more of their attention on. Um, ignoring the hype, get yourself skilled up, um, get yourself fit, mentally and physically fit, as much as you can anyway. Invest in your time, your money more wisely, and community. That's the five things. I think the five really important things for preppers to focus on and not waste their time on other other distractions well there we are 45 minutes roughly that loop not too bad well there we are guys that's the video hope you find it of interest the next few videos i got coming up i got to review a lot of gear i'm going to be doing an edc range of videos you know torches gear um multi-tools that sort of stuff so keep tuned for them practical prepping videos you know that's what i'm all about isn't it practical prepping and a few bits and bobs in the shop and that's about it if you haven't done so already please think about liking subscribing hit the notification bell and if you do want to see some more videos 
check that one out and that one and I'll catch you again next time. All the best.